people, you are represented by this girl. She was in captivity. Why? She was a slave. She was a slave in a, in a foreign land where her parents were away, far away from her. She had every reason. But she chose to represent the kingdom of God in the foreign land. And that's why I'm speaking about liberty in captivity. Because this girl is a representation of the body of Christ. So this girl was in a foreign land, a slave. Now many of us are not even slaves. Many of us are maybe our subordinate staff in work, but we do not represent the kingdom because we spend time bitter because of our situation. We feel intimidated. But this girl who had no name, no title, no position, she represented the kingdom of Israel in foreign land. I'm, the purpose of this message is you can be victorious in captivity because God has won the victory. Let me take you on quickly why this is relevant to us today. In the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 18, now we read Matthew. We read Matthew, chapter 16, verse 18. These were the words of Jesus, and he said, And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. So the church that Jesus was building is building the church by his Word. He is building the church through the ministers. When you read the book of, uh, we were not going to read the book of Ephesians. He said he gave some to be apostles. He gave some to be prophets, evangelists, teachers, and pastors for the building of the body. So Jesus built his church through the teachings of the people that he has graced or anointed. He has anointed some apostles, some prophets, some teachers and pastors for the building of the body. So the church Jesus is building is built by the teaching of God's word. It's not built by any other approach. And so when he says, I am building my church and the gates of hell will not overcome it, you are that church. Praise the Lord. I want you to know you are that church that Jesus is building and he already completed the work when he went to the cross, John 19.30. He said it is finished. So number one, we must remember we are the church and we are being built by the Lord himself. The other fact I want to bring to us is John Chapter 16, verse 33. John 16, verse 33. It says this, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you have trouble, but take a heart. I have overcome the world. Now this is where you connect with the girl in the, in the book of 2 Kings chapter 5. You are in a land of trouble. You are in a land of all manner of evil, like we know. And the, because of this evil, they, it may hinder you from being productive. Remember, Jesus said, I built my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. But the, so God expects you to be productive even in this land of troubles. Jesus expects you to be productive even in the land of troubles. And so you are in captivity of sorts in this land because this is the land where there's hatred, there's enmity, there's tribalism, there's confusion, there is all manner of disparity. But Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not overcome it. You are being built by the Lord so that as a church that is that is unbreakable. In the year 2000, they talk about being unbreakable, being undefeatable. It's only the church that Jesus is building that is undefeatable. 
And so we bless the Lord. So this girl, who was nameless, in our day and time, people are so taken up by titles. Some people do not witness because they don't have a title. Some people do not even represent the Lord because they don't have a name. Because they, they know but seem to know them. This girl was a slave. She wasn't an, even a, a, staff, a support staff. She was a slave. No choice. But she represented the kingdom. You are in a world of troubles, but God expects you to bring forth fruit. Fruit that will abide. That's why you must evict. You must show liberty. In even though you are in a place of captivity. I want to look at three things. No, call them four. But before we look at the four things, we want to look at the book of John chapter 4, 14, verse 12. John chapter 14, verse 18. Let's hear this, what it says. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. In fact, when we read from the book of from the same book, in verse, the earlier verses, the spirit of, of the truth. Let me read from 16. And I will ask your father that he will give you another comforter, another counselor to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives within you, with you and will be with you. Now, the only way we are going to have, you are going to have victory is when you have uh, the spirit of God. So Jesus was going up, was preparing to leave. And he was saying it is worthy, it's expedient, it's uh, that I leave. Because if I don't leave, the comforter will not come. So the Holy Spirit comes in this hostile environment that, that he can uh, help us. He can help you, the believer, so that you can in your productivity. Because the environments, the situations are hostile to the believer. But the Holy Spirit in a believer enables them to be productive. That's the only way you can be productive. That's why you can evict liberty in captivity. We bless the Lord. Okay, quickly. I want to go to the, th the four things that this girl, that we learn from this girl. Number one, this girl lived in a hostile environment. This girl lived in a hostile environment. But she had a testimony for the Lord. A lot, a lot, a lot of believers in our day will lose their testimony because they will, where they will be saying, everybody doesn't like me, everybody hates me, I am despised, I am the least. But this girl defeated the liberty in captivity, even in a hostile environment. You can, only, you can only do that when you are empowered and enabled by the Spirit of God. In an earlier version, God speaking to one Zachariah, he said it's not by might. It's not by power, but by my spirit. You will only defeat liberty in captivity when you allow the spirit of God to function in your life. Praise the Lord. So if this girl lived in a hostile environment, but she was not influenced by the hostile environment. She was, she rose above the environment. I don't want to say the church of today has been it's been ineffective because we have been influenced by the environment instead of rising above the environment. If you are going to, to show liberty in captivity, you are going to rise above the environment for the glory of God. How do we know she did that? Let's look at the book of Romans, chapter 12. 
so that your, your faith does not rest in empty words. 12, verse 17 to 21, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to revenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy hunger, feed him. If he is thus, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So this girl was in a hostile environment. She was harassed. She was a slave. And you know, when you are a slave, you don't have a choice. But you can see this girl. She, she was concerned about her master. And this was the man who caused them her to be halifanya chotwe. This is the captain who made her to be, to be captured and brought too far from her people. But she did not allow that environment to overcome her spirit. She was free. That's why she said, if my master what would go to Israel, he could be healed. You can never talk about someone's healing unless you are concerned about them, unless you have forgiven them. So she must have forgiven them and rose above the environment. You must rise above the environment in order to be able to, to defeat liberty in captivity. Praise the Lord. I, I number another thing. She must have appreciated that she was living in a sick environment. Sick environment. When your boss, when the leader of the house is sick, most people are also sick. The children are concerned, the wife is concerned, and they need a solution. But so she was living in in a sick environment, but she decided she would be the solution. She decided she would be the solution to this family. I want you to know, let's go to the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 17. Mark 16, verse 17. It says, and these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. God expects the church of Jesus Christ, the people that have no title, the general believer, the ordinary believer, as well as the ministers, to be able to pro provide a solution to the sick society. This girl is an example of a, a, a people without title, a people without position, people without recognition, but she, she spoke to the man of the house and said, if only, that was her testimony. She represented the kingdom of God, the kingdom of power, and that only can happen when you allow the spirit of God to function, to operate in you. So she became a solution. Why is, why is this relevant to you? It's because the environment where you live, your estate, your company, your organization is dependent upon you because you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. But many of us get overcome by the hostile environment when I say my, at a while I was careful, I was speaking to someone else and I was saying, in this age where we people are deceived, wanaomba maombi akwamba, return to center. I want to dare say today, the return to center prayer is not of God. Because Jesus said, if your enemy hunger, feed him. If he is, if he is, if he is thus, give him drink. But we are saying, whoever sent you, 
about to kill you, return to center is not of God. A lot of people are serving the other kingdom without knowing because if the person tries to bewitch you, you must try and overcome that and show them love. The kingdom of God is about love. So this girl showed love to people that even couldn't care. Maybe she would be told to wake up after some time, very early and sleep very late, but she still loved them because she knew she could provide the environment for the healing of that society. And there indeed, the environment came. Naaman was healed because of the testimony of the girl, nameless, but with a testimony of the Lord. Do you know many people are waiting for the bishop to come to your organization? Maybe that some are waiting for bishop or some pastor to come to your family in the clan meetings. I want to say you that is born again, you are the person there and you must represent the kingdom of God because God has planted you for a purpose and he has given you his spirit so that he will enable you to show liberty in captivity. Item number three, or point number three, This girl lived, it's, it looks like the earlier statement, but it's different. Lived in very unfriendly circumstances. Very unfriendly. Hostile, when it is hostile, everything is, you are kicked, you are abused, you are told things. But also when it's unfriendly, sometimes they don't care about whether only cooler. In fact, some people, one had some families, Wanakula na msiana wakasi, anakulia jikoni. That is an unfriendly environment. And uh, when that family has a problem, some, the, the girl may be saying it serves them right. Watajua wa na mtu wa mungu. Maybe they are not born again. But I want to say that people that are going to defeat liberty in captivity are people that are going to be to come to rise above the circumstances and be a testimony to that unbelieving family, to that unbelieving boss, and say, God loves you, he, Jesus is able to save you, and there's a bishop, there's a pastor, there's a reverend who can pray for you and be well because you are a testimony to the kingdom of God. Because God... Is the one who brought you where you are. I want to say at this point, a lot of people in church, a lot of people who confess Christianity are worshipping circumstances instead of worshipping God. What do you mean? I mean... How many people spend a lot of time complaining... We wang mungu wa meni wachelia. Oh, kama sio hali hi, kama sio kwamba sija ne sikupewa promotion, kama vile sikia kama siku angazo mshara, ninga kuwa happy because our the circumstances what you serve. I want to say you must join one called Habakkuk. And now we go to the book of Habakkuk. The people that will want to evict liberty in captivity must keep company with Habakkuk. And what did he say in chapter 3, verse 17? Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no graves on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stores. Yet I will rejoice in, in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The suffering Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go on the heights. The people that evict liberty in captivity have, will take company with Habakkuk 
who was he was not watching the circumstances kama ngombe itasa kama misabibu itasa he ama itasa haijalish he will he said i will serve i will worship i will honor the lord my one to say many, many believers today are in captivity and they've been overcome by the environment because they serve the environment they serve the circumstances instead of serving god If your circumstances are not working you must join this girl and say I will serve the Lord you must join Habakkuk and say even if that doesn't happen because the Lord the sovereign Lord is my strength he has become my help praise the Lord and friend is circumstances but she served the mighty God you know in our day and time you hear people say we serve a mighty god but most of the time we are complaining about oh i am the least nikienda kwa mikutano sitambuliki nikienda kwa kanisa wa mata mchungaji anijui nikiwa kwetu i'm the least like gideon you have something to, to complain about and that instead of giving your testimony about the greatness of God about the love of God about the mercies of God that are new every morning we are spending time complaining and that's why i'm saying many of the church is serving circumstances than the living God but when we serve God the bible will, will do two things when you serve God you are going to agree with the lord that even your circumstances in the book of romans Chapter 8 verse 28 828 It says and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose As you go through your circumstances When you are evicting liberty in captivity you be thanking God for the circumstances because you will realize it's not them it's not that boss it's not that mama it's not that papa who made you not to succeed it's God who allowed you and the girl saw an opportunity to witness and you also must see an opportunity to witness for the kingdom of God so that when you do that then you are evicting liberty in captivity Praise the Lord wave at me you are evicting liberty in captivity because you rise above circumstances for the glory of God praise the Lord I want to as we go towards the end I want to say this girl served in a hurting so sad do you think for her to be captured and be brought to a place other than her home there is possibility that they killed her relatives and, and just because she may be young and beautiful wakamua wambebe atumikie that's why she was sent i believe to the family um, ya bwana mkubwa jenjemetari akatumikie but maybe waliwa her people done no man of evil against her people and now she's here and then the family wame ameletwa oh wako na shida hata wao if you are kenyan believer they would have she would have been saying anyway hata wao waone hivyo that's not a person that is evict liberty in captivity because of people that evict liberty in, in in captivity who are powered by the spirit of god will be concerned like she was she must have been powered by the spirit of god and she did not hurt a lot of people do not want to forgive alisema walinifanya hivyo and now what a wow what a kiona i want to say the church is the solution and you are the solution It's not that your pastor it's not your bishop it's not anyone it's you by the power of the holy spirit so liberty in captivity will come to you when you allow the holy spirit to guide you and to use you appropriately to bring glory of god and you must be ready to forgive 
One of the biggest subjects that hinders people to walk in liberty in this world of trouble is unforgiveness. It's not a wonder to hear believers saying, we cannot share a table with Monsieur Tell at Tell. We cannot share a table with, that, with him. We can share a table with her because uh, she spoke something that was untoward about me. I want to say that's not a person that is going to defeat liberty in captivity. The person that defeats liberty in captivity is the person that decides I forgive them for Christ's sake. Hurting society did not prevent this girl to represent the kingdom of God. So why are we talking about liberty in captivity? And how can we achieve it? I want to share two things that will help you to, to achieve it. John chapter 8, verse 32. John chapter 8, verse 32. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. A lot of people in church and outside do not know the truth of the word of God. And so they, even when they hate, wanafikiri, wanafanyia, wanakasi, wanapo chukia, wanapo libisha visasi, when they take revenge, they think they're serving God. When a, they, they do that and they say, Mutunanda Minguni, Nata Kama Wanapenda Wapendi, Nataka Nikwambia, is when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. It's the truth that you know that sets you free. It's not a truth that is written. Because if the truth is written and you don't know it, then you are not free. We are set free by the truth that we know. You are set free by the truth you know. Not the truth that is written. The truth that you know when you are ignorant about your rights in law, you'll be oppressed. It doesn't mean the law is not there. The law is there, but you'll be oppressed even when the law is there. And the same thing happens when you don't know the truth. It's like the truth doesn't exist. When you know the truth, it sets you free. And the truth that will set you free will make you productive even in a land of captivity because the power is the Lord's. Number two, it's not just truth about relative, in this age of relative truth, I want to say it's not just every truth. Let me tell you which truth. John 14:6. We read two passages and we'll be done. Jesus and said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So the truth that we know is Jesus. Only Jesus will give you victory over circumstances. Only Jesus will give you victory over unfriendly circumstances. Only Jesus will give you victory over heartful society or hurting society only Jesus will give you victory over sick environment only Jesus will give you victory over hostile circumstances but you must know him when you know him whom to know is love eternal then you have liberty you will be able your spirit will be free you may be in bondage of sickness yourself you may be in bondage of over of harassment, but your spirit is free because you know the truth. Now, last scripture as we conclude is John 8, 36. What does, does it say? It says, so if the Son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. Remember, we said two things that will help you. Number one, you must know the truth. And that truth is not any truth. It's Jesus, the son of the living God. And then, because of the truth and the way, 
and the life. And then number two, when Jesus set you free, you are free indeed. Not free partly, free indeed for the glory of God. You're looking for liberty. It's found in Christ Jesus. They're looking for freedom of mind. It's in Christ Jesus. You're looking for liberty to serve the living God. It's in Christ Jesus. He gives it free to you. But you must accept him. You must say, Jesus, I am here. I need a touch of you. And to conclude this, yeah, I think I have a minute or so. How do I connect with this Jesus? John chapter 1, verse 12. Yet to all who received him, to those who, who, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. So we connect with, the, with Jesus by opening our hearts to him and say, Jesus, come into my heart and make me a child of God. That's the beginning. But when you have, been, you have received him, then he gives you the liberty as you allow him to grow you in his grace. Because that's the purpose. You, we all parents, and we lack our children to grow and we can send. Cindy, nobody loves to carry that. My, my, one of my sons is, uh, just celebrated the uh, that second birthday the other day on Monday. And sometimes I say, take my car and run because he's grown up. I want to know when you have accepted Jesus, then you grow in him, then he can send you. He can send you in Kenya, he can send you in Africa, he can send you in the globe, but he will send you when you are, you, you're born. You must be born again. And when you are born again, you must grow. And then when you are, you are growing, you will begin to show liberty in this world of hostility because the grace of God is will rest upon you for the glory of God. And so we give him all the praise and all the glory as we stand up and say and pray together. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for your love and mercy. We thank you for your, the grace of salvation. We bless you because you care about us and you've called us into this fellowship that we can walk in liberty in this hostile environment in our country and the surrounding areas. Lord, I pray that for my listener, help them, deliver those that need to be delivered, touch them. I pray for the sick. Lord, I speak your healing to your people so that, Lord, they will honor, honor worship, and gl glorify your name. Lord, I pray for strength to overcome circumstances and uh, unfriendly environment over your praise. We give you honor. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. You are here and you say you'll never leave. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. You are here and you say you'll never leave. We need you, Lord. You are now watching Missy Terrence, House of Rest. You are now welcome to Missy Television, House of Rest. We are a Christian TV station airing spiritual nourishing and morally shaping content. To advertise your product and service or book a preaching session with us, call us on 0745-849622 or 0722358590. You can also email us at nisitv2020 at gmail.com. Nisi Television, House of Rest.
Have you been searching for a plot to build your home, a place with beautiful environment, accessible roads, modern schools, electricity and water? Relax, your prayer has been answered. Your real partner is here. We have a new breathtaking project located at Rui Joska, right next to Sunshine Duvoyne. We are selling plots going for a super special offer, Ma Sanitizer Gardens. And don't forget all these plots have ready title deeds. Call us on 0714-717-777 or 0727-779-777. Changam ka chukua hatua jini we na ploti lipa mdogo mdogo the fortune gardens jini we na ploti you are now watching missing television house of rest